I say we got the collections framework in 1998 and BAM 25 years later list gets method get first and get last. Who's slow now? On the theme of immutability, here's one of Venkat Supraminiam's Java function programming idioms. Welcome everyone to the Inside Java Newscast, where we cover recent developments in the OpenJDK community. I'm Nikolai Palok, Java developer advocate at Oracle, and today we're going to look at sequence collections and the meaning of immutability and purity. And in an unprecedented move, I can already share next episode's topics too. That will be string templates, the deserialization filter, and JavaFX 19. Why so random? All of these topics will be presented in a lot of depth at Java 1. And in this episode and the next, I want to give you a sneak peek of what's gonna go down in Las Vegas from October 17th to 20th. It's a unique opportunity to meet the members of JPG, that's the Java platform group at Oracle, and chat with them personally, whether it's Brian Getz, Stuart Marks, Ron Pressler, they and many, many others will be there. To learn more, go to oracle.com slash java1 and keep in mind that there's a $200 discount if you register before August 14th. Speaking of URLs though, I will link to all the sessions that I mentioned in the description, but they're not all online yet, so some of the URLs are just my guesswork. I hope you forgive me that this peek is so sneaky, I even tricked Oracle. No doubt all info will be published soon, but until then, everything I say is subject to change. With all of that out of the way, are you ready? Then let's dive right in. Some people say Java moves slowly. I say we got the collections framework in 1998 and BAM! 25 years later, list gets method get first and get last. Who's slow now? Jokes aside, this was long overdue, but better late than never. To go into a bit more detail, what is going to be introduced, hopefully next year, will be the concept of sequenced collections. This is basically an upgrade from collections with encounter order, which includes all lists as well as some sets like sorted set implementations and some maps like linked hash map. Importantly, this concept will be captured by three new interfaces, sequenced collection, sequenced set and sequenced map. And these interfaces will describe methods like get, add, remove, first and last. They will also make it much easier to iterate in reverse order by offering a method reversed that returns an instance of the same sequenced interface type that is a view on the current collection but in different direction. That way you can easily and cheaply use all iteration mechanisms, be it for each loop, a stream, a conversion to an array, etc. For more on this, check out Stuart Mark's talk Sequence Collections or go to his Q&A on collections. But we're not done with collections yet. Maurice Naftalin will give two talks on the topic. Return to Planet Collections is based on the upcoming second edition of his classic book Java Generics and Collections. What I look forward to the most is the design retrospective distilling 25 years experience of the framework. For example, on the um, copious amount of unsupported operations exceptions that the APIs allow. But he also has a talk on immutable slash unmodifiable collections. So why the two terms? It appears that the common understanding for immutability means immutable all the way down, meaning not only can a list or map not change, the elements it contains can't either. Java objects can be immutable, but only if their class cannot be extended, has only final and private fields, has exclusive access to mutable components and offers no mutators for them. Immutable generic collections can do almost all of that, but won't generally have exclusive access to mutable components, say the user instances you add to them, and can't limit elements to only mutable ones. Hence a new term is needed, unmodifiable. You can't add, remove, replace, reorder, etc. elements of an unmodifiable collection but the elements themselves could be mutated if they allow it. For more on that, check out Maurice's talk, Is Change Inevitable? On the theme of immutability, here's one of Venkat Supraminiam's Java function programming idioms. In his talk on this topic, he'll explain what it means for a function to be pure and why that's important. A pure function is one that has no side effects, meaning it doesn't change any state, and is idempotent, meaning it always returns the same result for the same input. To achieve that, the function can't change anything, that much is obvious, but it also can't depend on anything that may possibly change. When writing a lambda, Java doesn't help you a whole lot with these two requirements. It gives you a compile error when variables in a lambda body aren't effectively final, which means you cannot reassign those variables inside or outside the lambda, but it doesn't prevent you from taking an effectively final variable and mutate its state, like adding something to a modifiable list for example. Code that does this cannot reap all the functional programming benefits like carefree lazy valuation and parallel computation. It also makes it tougher to quickly predict what the code does. Check out this example. What does the code print? 
Make a prediction, try it out in JShell and let me know in the comments whether you got it right. But the lesson is not learn how this code behaves, it's don't write this code. For more functional programming idioms, attend Venkat's talk. And to get more perspectives on functional and data-oriented programming in general, also check out The Sincerest Form of Flattery by my colleague Jose Pomar and by Maurice Neftalin, and Data-Oriented Programming with Records, Seal Classes, Text Blocks and more by JPG's Brian Getz and Gavin Bierman. For a sneak peek on Data-Oriented Programming, watch Inside Java Newscast number 29 right after this one. Project Loom took the stage by storm this year. With its two major components, Virtual Threads and Structured Concurrency preview in Java 19, everybody wants to learn more about it and Java 1 delivers. From a talk by Mr. Virtual Thread himself, Ron Pressler, to a performance review by Java performance engineer and JPG, Sergei Kuksenko. From experience reports on a Loom-based web server by Halidans Thomas Langer and a Loom-based implementation of the consensus protocol Raft by Andrea Rodionov, to a hands-on lab by Jose, there will be enough to quench your thirst for Loom knowledge and then some. If by any chance some questions are left unanswered, there will also be opportunities to talk to all of these experts one-on-one -on -one and ask them yourself. But just between you and me, if you can't make it to Java 1, check out Jose's recent Jeb Cafe episodes, where he goes all in on virtual threads and structural concurrency. There's a ton of theoretical and practical knowledge in those. Won't give you everything the sessions will be about, and I can't give you Ron's telephone number for a remote one-on-one -on -one either, but it will get you a long way. But there's so much more that I can possibly cover. As I already mentioned, I'll tell you about string templates, the deserialization filter, and JavaFX19 in the next episode. Those talks aside, here are a bunch of sessions of subject matter experts that look really interesting. Speaking of experts, an essential part of conferences is that you not only get to listen to their presentations, but also have a chance to chat to them and ask your questions directly. This is particularly noteworthy because at Java 1, you don't have to make due with Billy, Jose or me, but can talk to members of the Java platform group who actually design and create the stuff themselves. Because no matter how hard we try, we can never even get close to how much these folks know. So if you have the opportunity to come to Las Vegas in October, you don't want to miss it. And that's it for today on the Inside Java Newscast. Don't forget to check out oracle.com slash java1 and I hope I get to see you in Las Vegas in October. Other than that, I'll see you again in two weeks. So long!